Well, I'm losing daylight here and I'm on some back roads, so I can't just stop anywhere. So we're gonna have to make today's video like this. So yes, 10 blown tires in a year. And that sounds crazy and it sounds like a driver problem, but we're gonna talk about it in this video. So first, first thing I wanna say is, if you've been around the channel for a long time and you've been watching my videos for a long time, if you can leave a comment down below and I, I just want, I just want you to say something if about like, you know, if I'm a straight shooter, if I tell you like it is, or if I make things up and just kind of fluff what's going on out here uh, to look good on YouTube. Um, for that is for all the new people if, you know for the new people that if you've never seen my videos or if you think I'm an idiot you clicked on this because I've blown 10 tires in a year well there's a reason but check out some of the comments down below if you know if you're new if you're new to this channel but let's get into it so yeah 10 tires in one year now I would say that the first two were on me for sure um, I didn't know and I didn't just, just lack of information ignorant I was ignorant to the fact that these tires are rated for 62 miles an hour and if you load them down you spread out the axles you load them down and you're heavy obviously the heavier you are heavier you are the more heat the more friction there is the more heats that heat that is created and then that turns into basically overloading the tire and then you get a nice big explosion <laughs> had quite a few nice big explosions so i would say that probably the first two were on me i didn't know that um the first time you know i replaced the tire the second time it happened like a month later that's when i started to realize something's going on i'm doing something wrong that's when i understood okay well now i get it there are you know there there are all right, so I started to do research into these tires and started to realize, oh, wow, you know, this thing's rated for 62 miles an hour. I did some looking into it, and pretty much the only tire that's not rated that low are Continental tires, and I have yet to put them on, but I am going to, I'm going to look into them, and, and, and that's what I'm going to go after uh, this next time, as long as I don't blow any more tires, and kind of keep them all consistent because right now on the trailer all of the tires back there they're all either brand new or fairly new so I have basically an even set of tires so I'm gonna take you know I'm gonna take good care of them which I have been and we'll get into you know basically the large chunk of why I blew tires here in a second but the first two I'm gonna say are on me the third tire I picked something up uh, there was a chunk of metal in it and that's you know that's just gonna happen you know it's just unavoidable uh, I am very good about checking my tires every single day you know and looking to see if I have picked something up because I you know I had super singles before I changed those out and put duels on the truck and that was something I was very paranoid about so that's just like second nature to me um, I pull stuff out of my tires all the time but so the trailer had a problem and it was very apparent when I, you know, I obviously I started popping tires. I wound up popping like six tires in about, I don't remember the exact time frame, but we'll call it like five weeks, like five weeks or so. And in these five weeks popping those six tires, obviously you start popping tires like that. You're definitely, you know, you're looking to see what the world is going on. And Yes, the, the, I forget the technical term for it. I think it's yaw, but I'm not sure, I'm not certain. What I do know is that the trailer lost its arch on one side. So one side of the trailer lost its arch and it was causing an alignment issue, which was causing more friction. More friction causes more heat, more heat. Go the tires, go. So I took the trailer back to Rittenauer, which I've got a video on that. I'll post that right up here if you're curious. Um, took it to Rittenauer. They fixed it right up. Zero charge to me. And since, the trailer has done extremely well. I did haul a heavy coil after that, and I'm talking an overweight coil. I did pop a tire there, but 
I was probably, you know, I, I was driving 62 miles an hour, and in reality, looking back at it, probably should have should not have gone over 55. So I'm gonna once again, I'm gonna put that particular tire on me. Now, beyond that, this most recent tire, I posted a little short video, and you know, from the side of the road, obviously getting a tire changed. That tire, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that that tire was also on me. The reason that one was on me is that was the last of the tires that were kind of older and had some wear on them. And this trailer is set up for a dump valve. However, my truck is not set up for a dump valve. And I knew that it had a little bit of funky wear but I didn't know that the wear was as bad as it was to cause something like that. Now here's my theory, here's what I think happened. I think that, or I knew that it had some wear on it, you know, basically from being spread and taking too tight of a turn. Uh, if you've run a spread axle, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I had to make a very tight turn yesterday actually two days ago whenever I parked at this truck stop and the next morning when I looked at that tire the only kind of worn spots or chunky spots that were missing or worn out were all in the same spot so I think I just kind of got unlucky and made three or how who knows how many but made two more sharp turns on that tire and it was just too much on top of that I was driving fast. Um, I've gotten braver since I had the truck repaired, and since I've had the truck repaired, I've, you know, I've tested it out, tested it out with the axles closed. When the axles are closed, you know, even heavy, I think I ran a load that was 40,000 pounds, I was running at 68 miles an hour, and the trailers, the, the tires were not getting hot. I would get out, I'd drive a couple of hours, I'd get out, check it, and you know, I've been kind of diligent about checking to see how hot these tires are truly getting. So I got braver and yesterday it was kind of tight to make the delivery in the afternoon. Had about 20 minutes to spare and had to go across Hot Atlanta. Well, it was on me because I was going too fast. I think just kind of the, the, the combination of all of those things, making those, you know, those tight turns, just chewing that tire up just a little bit too much. And then on top of that running, you know, a little bit faster than what the tires were rated for, it cost me. So, you know, it cost me. It didn't cost me a day uh, because I, I, able, I picked up today, picked up a coil. You know, it's still, it's delivering Monday. What it did was it cost me a few hours at the house, which, you know, it, that just happens. So I'm not, the money is not affected other than the cost of the tire, which I was gonna have to replace the tire anyway. You know, I was gonna try to give it, you know, a couple of more months to try to get a couple of months wear out of that tire before I changed it. Well, I think in hindsight and, and going from this point forward, what I'm gonna have to do is it sucks, but it just, I'm just gonna have to do it every single day. I'm gonna have to get on basic. I mean, I have to get all the way down. It's a low pro trailer, you know, 35 inches, whenever it's loaded out, I'm gonna have to crawl underneath that trailer and check the inside of those tires every single day. Uh, especially if I'm running spread, you know, I think it's just gonna have, gonna have to be part of it. And also what's gonna have to happen, and it's gonna have to happen soon, which kind of sucks. I have a lot of stuff planned to fix up the truck and not necessarily, um, not necessarily aesthetically. A couple of them are kind of aesthetic, but you know, it's really, it's kind of maintenance. Um, I'm gonna have to forego some of that stuff or just push it back a little bit and get the dump valve set up on this truck. Now I've been quoted a thousand dollars to install the dump valve on this truck and that seems high to me. So I'm gonna get a few quotes uh, and try to see where I can get the best deal because I think that I can get that number way down and have it done for, you know, maybe like four, maybe even 500 bucks. Yes, I know, I can do it myself for considerably cheaper than all of that, but I'm not exactly the most mechanically inclined and when we're talking about some of the things that I'm gonna have to do, you know, electrical, air-wise, whatever is involved, it's on that, that yellow pigtail back there that you see, 
um, on some of the flatbed trailers, that's above my pay grade. So I'm just gonna have to pay you know, somebody to, to do that. Um, looking in the Houston area, if you know somebody in the Houston area that can do that for me for a solid price, let me know in the comments down below. I would appreciate it. Uh, but I'm gonna have to get that done as soon as possible. I'm gonna start looking, I'm gonna be home. Uh, today is Friday. I'm gonna be home uh, on, well, I'm gonna be home for one day, but then I have to come back uh, on Monday after I deliver, I said Monday twice, I'm gonna be home on Saturday. I have to come back on Monday after I deliver this load, this coil to San Antonio, because I got my title in. Um, have to have to get that title changed over, register the truck, I don't know, whatever all I have to do with that, that needs to be done. So, Lone Mountain is not so bad, you know? Um, not gonna say they have the most ideal trucks out there, but certainly worked for me. And uh, everything's been going really well. Um, yeah, so anyway, gotta take care of that. And then I have Cavs class, which I need to get that set up for hopefully Tuesday, hopefully. Um, that's kind of one of the bummer things that you have to take care of, but it's just part of being, you know, a part of Landstar, so no way around it. It's what they require. Got to take care of it. Got to handle business. So need to take care of all of those things. So looking to take care of all of that next week. And then maybe I can get the dump out, take care of while I'm at home. I don't know if I'll have enough time to get all of that set up and have that taken care of, but possibly. But I am going to do that ASAP. But yeah, the, 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 the majority of those pop tires were because of a, an actual problem with the trailer. And then it is also because I don't have, I don't have this trailer set up for a dump valve. Um, not making excuses, not complaining, that's on me. But just wanted to put all of this info out there. If you are running a low pro and you're having a problem popping tires, it is probably because of your speed. Um, it just, you know, it is what it is. I talked to Mr. Spooner before he retired and was very grateful for that conversation. He was running a, a low pro triple. I wish this was a triple. Uh, he said that, uh, he, he said that he feels like the triples are much easier on tires. You know, I, he knows a lot more than I do. So I'm sure that is the case, but he also said that he slowed way, way down and he didn't drive his truck over 60 miles an hour. So there is certainly a correlation there with, you know, how fast you're driving on these low pro tires. Now, I know that there are guys out there that, you know, they book it everywhere they go on these 17 fives and don't have any issue. I think that it boils down to weight, dis weight distribution and, you know, um, and of course speed because you know the, the weight the pressing down of the weight i mean it's it's simple physics it's it's a heat problem and you know if i'm empty i can run this thing 70 miles an hour and not have a problem you know with popping tires whatsoever but as i start to get loaded if i have a load on the trailer i'm not going to be driving over 65 miles an hour and once i hit about the 35,000 mile or the 35,000 pound for the freight that I have on the trailer back there, I'll definitely not be running over 62 miles an hour. I think that's going to cure all of the problems unless I chew up a tire because of, you know, not having that dump out back there. So, you know, there you go. There it is. That's the problem that's, that's I've dealt with over the past year. That's why I'm popping 10 tires. Um, you know, I'm not a lazy truck driver. I'm not a super trucker. One, I don't know everything out here, certainly, but I do do my pre-trips and I do check my tires constantly. By the way, I also have the Bendix air system back there, so my tire pressure is a constant 120, and so it's not a it's not an air issue uh, whatsoever. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the notification bell, do all the things. But as always, stay driven.